can you say it to me? Wait, what is, is that a, a molecular differentiation or is that a... Well, what's the other, what's the bottom Sounds one? Sounds like an enzyme. I'm sorry, what, what's, what's the, the question? What's the mutation at the bottom? I mean, we would, one's a frame shift well, that leads to a non the other one's a yeah. missense. The other ones are previously reported missense associated with methylmonic esteria. And that one's frame shift. So these are pathogenic. Yeah. I think she was asking if there's some small amount of... Activity. activity. Oh, oh, residual activity, so, sorry. But you can kind of infer by, by the type of mutation, no? Well, it depends how hard they are to manage. No. And no, this oh, looks bad. Protein, Not as a rule of thumb. Yeah. Whatever happens to the protein? From the molecular, from the molecular you can change? Guess. You, you can, can guess, but you can't. Guess. Guess. I, think, yeah, I, mean, I mean, the nonsense, you can say probably no function, does? but the missense, you can't really yeah. predict. Yeah. I'd rely much more on if somebody has this out in the world, what is their activity yeah. look like? Okay. So, um, go, continuing on in speed mode. So we have the the HNF1A de novo variant and the the mute the two variants. Um, pa those are pathogenic. Um, okay, two, two, one. <laughs> We're in diagnostic mode. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so this is uh, Derek, a 16-year-old male. Your case. Yes, um, this is a patient who came in with chronic fatigue. Uh, I was I was convinced it was a psychiatric origin um, uh, because he was a A student, and then three years ago he, he had a strep infection, so he could I guess he could have post strep uh, thing. But um, he um, he then can't even get out of bed, and um, there's all these other um, issues. But they, he basically has no energy. But it turns out that, you know, if he wants to go to a video games convention, he can manage to get out of there. Um, so I, I mean, his, his parents are desperate, and they're, they're, they want to know if he has mitochondrial infection. Okay. So we, you know, I explained to them that it's very low yield in this case, but okay. um, i excited to do it. Okay, so we did a trio. There were no runs of homozygosity as a theme today. Um, there were no deletions. Uh, there was one convincing de novo variant outside the primary gene, gene list in the LAX1 gene, valine disoleucine. Uh, so it's predicted benign, but it's, it's rare. Uh, this is not a clinical disease gene. I couldn't really find anything about it. Uh, homozygous variants, none in the primary gene list. Um, outside the primary gene list, nothing going. Nothing looking very interesting. Uh, so we have, there was one mitochondrial genome variant, but it's a polymorphism. Uh, wait, wait, what, what, what is that? There was a thing that LA showed it. Yeah, that's this variant. It's in the primary gene list. So this is a, a homoplasmic maternal variant polymorphism in a mitochondrial gene. You see those all the time. Um, compound heterozygous variants in the primary gene list. There were two variants in the LAMA1 gene. Both are observed in the population and are missense. Um, and it's not a clinical disease gene. Um, obviously, the laminins are structural proteins are pretty well known, but this one's never been disease associated. Um, there were none outside the primary gene list that were like, causing severe energy disorders. So, no significant variants. <laughs> As expected. <laughs> yeah. In the major phenotype that the kiddo is. I'm sorry? Is energy law or fatigue? Fatigue, yes, yeah. I'm huh. a psychiatrist. Well, I told them that, you know, you've already been seeing psych for years. They're just at the end of their rope, which is. So, speaking of at the end of our rope, uh, Dr. Marash, your case is, is yeah. last but not least. This is a 60 year old male. Was, who only developed symptoms at 60. Um, they started some un unsteadiness, uh, he started to lose equilibrium. Uh, he was a climber, a very active person, uh, and slowly, slowly lost abilities and needed assistance with uh, activities of daily living, and is in a wheelchair by the time we saw him. Uh, he also has a speech uh, impediment, uh, he's hypophonic and barely uh, in, uh, intelligible at the time that we, we saw him. In addition, he has dyspepsia, 
and um, you know what, what type of phonia? Hypophonia, the, the, the voice can't yes. talk. Song. But it's difficult, it's yes. just soft. Mm -hmm. and, but you can hardly understand it, you know, so it's, 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 it's sad, but you know, just the meditation and hypochondria. And the dyspatia, and, uh, and so he gets this aspiration of the throat, and the speech therapy wanted to put it through, but, but because of the dyspatia, but they, he didn't want to. Very highly intelligent and motivated man. I gave you pictures of the MRI because that's very significant. Did you did you get that? By the way, did you get this? Because in my in my report that I'm sending to you, I'm putting everything that I think we could use, including the the pedigree and any MRI or any things that you may need. Um, but uh, basically, uh, let me see the yeah, it didn't really come out through the fax. 